Hey there, in this video, we'll talk about exception handling with the ABP framework. ABP provides a built-in infrastructure and offers a standard model for handling exceptions. It automatically handles all exceptions and sends a standard formatted error message to the client for an API request automatically hides internal infrastructure errors and returns a standard error message. Provides an easy and configurable way to localize exception messages. And last but not least, it automatically maps standard exceptions to their proper HTTP status codes. And also provides an option to map a specific error to a specific HTTP status code. So you can customize the status codes of your exceptions. And all of that automation is thanks to the ABP exception filter which handles an exception if any of the following conditions are met. An exception is thrown by a controller action which returns an object result, not a view result. The request is an AJAX request, X requested with the HTTP header value of XML HTTP requests, and if the client explicitly accepts the application JSON content type through the accept HTTP header and if the exception is handled, it is automatically logged and a formatted JSON message is returned to the client. Let us take a look at the JSON formats of the exceptions. The error message is an instance of the remote service error response class, and it is the simplest error JSON that has a message property as shown. And it can be used when you just need to pop up an error message without the other fields, like the error codes and error details, etc, etc. And the other optional fields can be filled based upon the exception that has occurred. Such as the error code, which is an optional and a unique string value for the exception. And the thrown exception should implement the I has error code interface to fill this field. And it can also be used to localize the exception and customize the HTTP status code. And we'll take a look at that. The error details is another optional field of the JSON error message which is also a simple string that returns the details of an error. And to use it, the thrown exception should implement the I has error details interface. If a validation error occurs and the thrown exception is implemented the I has validation errors, then it'll return a list of validation results that contains the validation errors. And the ABP validation exception implements the I has validation errors interface. And when a request input is not valid, then the validation exception is already thrown by the framework itself. And so usually you do not need to deal with validation errors unless you have a highly customized validation logic. All the caught exceptions are automatically logged and exceptions are logged with the error level by default. And you can implement the I has log level interface if you wanted to determine the log level by yourself. If the exception needs to write additional logs, you can implement the I exception with self-logging interface and use its log method. Most of our exceptions are business exceptions, and you can use the I business exception interface to mark an exception as a business exception. And the business exception class implements the I business exception interface in addition to the I has error code, I has error details, and the I has log level interfaces and the default log level is warning. Here is an example of your typical business exception. In the QA error codes and cannot vote your own answer is just a constant string. And this error code format is recommended and applied by the ABP framework automatically. The code namespace, column, and then the error code. Because the code namespace is a unique value specific to the module or the application. And ABP configures it automatically for you. For example, right here, the volo.qa is the code namespace, and ABP configures this code namespace automatically so it's going to be used while localizing exception messages. You could either directly throw a business exception or derive your own exception types from it when you need it. All the properties of the business exception class are optional, but will generally set either the error codes or the message properties. Localizing error messages while throwing the exceptions could be challenging. ABP offers two models and their variants. The first one is the user-friendly exception. If your exception implements the iUserFriendly exception interface, then ABP sends the error message and details directly to the client. And you can inject and use the standard string localizer for this one. It already supports parameterized messages. 
Now this way forces you to inject the string localizer everywhere and always use it while throwing exceptions and you won't be able to inject it in a static context or an entity method. And this is what the other model offers. Using error codes. First you're gonna grab the code namespace and you're gonna define it to the localization resource mapping in the module configuration. And then you're gonna fill in your localized error codes, put them in constant strings, and then call these strings in your business exceptions. And for the message parameters, you can set it with the exceptions data property as seen. And this is a shortcut for it. And as for the HTTP status codes, for common exception types, ABP tries to automatically determine the most suitable HTTP status code by following these rules. And you can override these mappings with custom mappings. It is also possible to subscribe for exceptions and be informed whenever the ABP framework handles an exception for you since ABP automatically logs all the exceptions to the standard logger. And to do that, you can just create a class, derive the exception subscriber, override its handle async method, and the contacts object contains the necessary information about the exception that has occurred. There are also built-in exceptions, ABP authorization exception, ABP validation exception, and entity not found exception. And last but not least, before we move into the code part, we can configure the options of the exception handling in the configure services method of our module. And it's got two booleans, send exception details to the clients and send stack trace to the clients. Let us see all of this in action. First, let's see the ABP exception filter in action. We are in the customer controller right here in the HTTP API layer, and we've got two controller actions right here. When we get a customer by its ID, we're gonna throw a user-friendly exception, and if we get the list of the customers, we are gonna get an exception. Let's get a customer by its ID, and you see as the client, since it's a user-friendly exception, we are gonna see the exception right in front of us. Whereas if we try to get a list of the customers, it's going to give us the standard error message. It's not going to give us the string right here that there is a problem with the list. But if we check the output, we can see the string. There is a problem with the list. We can't see it from the client side, but we can see it on the server side. We've also got the localizer controller right here. We've got two actions right here, the get all strings and the localize all language. One of them is a user friendly exception and the other one is also an exception. However, if we try the get all string method, we can see that it gives a 500 internal server error. If we change this to X requested with the XML HTTP request, we can see that it handles it and returns the result. If we change it to the accept application JSON, it can also handle it. If we uncheck this, then it goes back to normal. Same with the localize all language. Let's try sending it without it. Let's try the first one. And also the second one. We can also see it in the output. And you can dive deeper into the source code of the exception filter to see for yourself. As for the business exception, we are at the domain shared layer right here. And these are our constant strings. We're naming and putting numbers for our errors right here, and we are localizing them right here. And at the module class, ABP configures it for you automatically. And this is why we said that this format is recommended, because ABP configures it based on the namespace. And this is how it gets localized. And right here in the customer manager at the domain layer, We've replaced the errors with localized errors. When creating a customer group and giving it a certain code, if this code already exists, we're gonna throw a business exception with this constant string, which is 04. If we check it out, customer group with the customer group code already exists with the data of the code being the customer group code. Let's see it in Postman. So group two, description two, we've already created it. And as you can see right here, 
customer group with group two already exists. And the code is issue management 004 and the customer group code is group two. We didn't mention this in the presentation part, but you can actually localize something coming with the exception message. And you can use the I localize error message interface to do that. It's only got this method, which is the localize message. We've created this class in the domain layer. There is transaction record exception. Its constructor is going to grab the type of the entity in the exception. And after grabbing it, it's going to localize it. And we're using the there is transaction record constant string right here, which is number 002. Let's check it out. So it's going to be the operation could not be completed because there is a transaction record of type this, the entity type. Let's take an example in action so we can see it better. In the customer group app service right here, on the delete method, when we want to delete a customer group, we made a condition right here that if there is a customer onto this customer group, then it's not going to delete it, right? So there are customers connected to this customer group with this code. We've commented out the old exception and we're putting the there is transaction record exception, which is the constructor of this class. And we're only passing in the type customer. And this is how it gets localized by its namespace. You see right here? issue management dot customers dot customer customer we've got the delete async method right here we're going to delete a customer group by this id in this customer group i made sure that there is a customer latched to it and as you can see issue management 002 the operation could not be completed because there is a transaction record of type customer customer in all thanks to this class at the HTTP API layer specifically at the module class we're mapping the status code not found to the customer group not found constant string if you see in Postman right here if we look for a customer group that does not exist which is not found it returns a 403 and here I am custom mapping it to 404 and after mapping we can actually see it right here so it's going to be a business exception issue management error codes customer group code not found which is this 0001 which is this so it goes to our customer group with this code not found now let's see it after mapping and after rerunning the application we can see it is 404 not found we have custom mapped it and last but not least, in the module class of the domain layer, we can configure the options of the exception handling. These two were false all along. We can make them true. And if you remember the get list async from the customer controller, that was only showing the internal server error exception message. This time, if we rerun it with these options true, we can see all of the details with the message, with the stack trace, and everything. We can see it with all the details, the message, and the stack trace. And this has been exception handling with the ABP framework. Please refer back to the documentation for all the other details that we could not cover in this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.